Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is Sukata Sarkar video. I am the Global Head for Integration Technology for Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, we will take you through the, our uh, EDA journey and uh, how the bank is shaping up in terms of the future and how uh, EDA, event driven architecture, or even service mesh, or APIs, or cloud is going to shape up the bank. Uh, Standard Chartered is an international bank with more than 160 years of heritage. Uh, with a diverse and complex footprint across Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, we saw corporate and affluent retail clients, but for the purpose of today's presentation, I will focus on our retail digital banking journey. We are active in 59 markets and have 45 booking centers. Despite a, despite a diverse and complex footprint, we have a largely homogeneous tech core. We are, we are probably more homogeneous than most of the international banks. Now, as you see, I mean, over the last 160 years, we have, we have acquired companies, we have acquired other banks, uh, we have amalgamated and merged, and a huge pile of systems that we deal with. Uh, and uh, for these 59 markets, I mean, in spite of the complexity of the 59 markets, we still have a very homogeneous state core, uh, which largely consists of global systems. And uh, there might be like uh, systems in country, but they are very less in numbers. Uh, and in terms of our digital adoptions, we have like around 9 million retail clients and uh, our retail customers. Uh, our digital adoption is 54% on retail. Uh, needless to say that we have an equal digital adoption on our corporate banking sites, on the institutional banking sites, uh, where we deal a lot with cash management, trade finance, FM, so on and so forth. Uh, and our digital sales is actually to the tune of 2.7x of what it was yesterday. Uh, needless to say, we are one of the top 100 large companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. And besides London Stock Exchange, uh, we are listed in Hong Kong uh, and India. Now, uh, so the world has quite changed. I mean, since we have, like, uh, like our banking has changed, I mean, since 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, and uh, so in today's standing today, where we are in the midst of COVID, where the world is disrupted, uh, when, where do we take, want to take our business to? So what's our, what's our North Star? Like when we see ourselves in the next one year to five years to the next 10 years and how the business is shaping up in the context of the larger landscape that we deal with. Uh, so in terms of North Star, we have like four areas or four principles that we have uh, charted. So one is the digital for strategy. So anything that we provide to our customers uh, has, to be, has to be on the digital path. So that's the uh, so that's the point of presence uh, for the bank. And obviously COVID-19 has accelerated the journey Massively, as we all know. Uh, our second aspect is cloud first strategy, which means that uh, we will be uh, partnering with our cloud partners. It can be AWS, it can be Azure. So, initially, we'll actually offload the uh, contents into the cloud, we'll offload our computing into the cloud, and later on, we'll actually move into the cloud native applications to leverage the benefits of residency uh, of the cloud platforms. Uh, and then, the open banking, the entire APIs, open banking. And EDA. So this is about like how can we integrate with our third parties? It can be purely open banking, which is driven by regulatory requirements uh, by Hong Kong, Singapore, London, like uh, PSG2, etc. Or it can be how we deal with our retail partners or corporate partners. Uh, and that's where the architectural complexity and the architectural mobility for the future comes into picture. And then we have the connected banking, which is the which is like uh, very much in the hearsay today. And that's how the bank will shape up for the future. So you have the connected banking of the IoT, a huge amount of devices will be connected and uh, the channels would not be only internet banking or mobile banking or anything else. It would be like devices and uh, it can be anything for that matter. So that's the, that's the, that's the four areas where uh, our North Star is heading to. But the thing is that, so what we need to do to actually enable this North Star to make sure that uh, I, I speak about client customer delight. So how the customer will be delighted in terms of his expectation is met and not only the expectation is met, I mean, it is far beyond that what the expectation is. And that's where the context of like in today's context, you have the always on systems, like you cannot be down a single minute, right? Uh, you have always connected and always engaged systems. So these three words, always on, always connected and always engaged. Uh, requires a revamp or restructuring of our architectural footprint and the way people look at ecosystems. And that's where the that's where the aspect of like even even architecture or a service mess or APIs or the new world of, for example, uh, observability telemetry comes into picture. So I'll give you a glimpse of all that what we are doing in Santa Chara. Uh, so the next slides I talked about the North Star and what are what are what are the core stuffs that we'll 
uh, focus on. And these are the foundational principles. So what are the foundational principles that we need to build on? I mean, be it if you want to be a cloud first bank, if you want to be a digital first bank, if you want to be an API first bank, if you want to be an even driven first bank, uh, what are the core foundational assets that we need to look into? So the main thing is architecture because that's where it all starts, right? And if you look at today's scenario where like you have data centers, you have cloud, you have different systems, like uh, you have to have mobility of the systems and I call it flexibility. So if you have to have the flexibility of the system, uh, what's important is a typical level seven, uh, level seven routing, uh, which can be like, think about uh, a term of an ingress in terms of cloud architecture, uh, or you can have a smart router, which will help you to navigate across various parts of systems and various parts of instances as you need, right? Uh, then you have the blue green deployments where obviously, I mean, this is how the resilience is brought in and you don't have like, you have an always on system so that the customers are not impacted for any of your changes releases whatsoever, uh, or even impacts. Uh, then we have the event driven taxonomy, which is like a very unique concept, which my colleague also will let us speak about. Uh, so the and this is specifically for, I mean, uh, we use Solus as, even, uh, as our event bus. Uh, so this is about like how you can discover that, uh, the, the event topics or queues so that systems can connect to it and then programmatically connect to them. So that's uh, that's another aspect. And then how do you actually make it a managed service model? For example, uh, uh, when other systems, when other systems or e any systems connect to the other, how they connect seamlessly without the headache of being known uh, to the system in the middle. So that's what we call the managed service. Uh, then the second aspect is of course stability. I mean, that's the core of whatever we do. I mean, I spoke about it. It's always on systems. We have to make sure that we reduce the blast areas. So when you when we architect, we need to architect with that in mind. Uh, in in today's world, when the volumes are going high, when the number of transactions is going high, but the value of the transaction is going less, that actually entails that we become more efficient. So to actually have it more efficient, we need to be self-service. So whatever we do. We need to make sure that we actually build a self-service model so that the cost of transactions, in spite of the volume of transactions, is not impacted. Uh, and whatever possible, you need to do maximal, maximum automations. Uh, then on the, on the fourth quarter, we have actually got into something called a client-centric experience. So uh, in the earlier days, I mean, client experience used to be only the forte of uh, systems, which is client-facing, right? Uh, but that's 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 a, that's a wrong paradigm. The thing is that what we should do is that we should actually think about client in everything that we do. It can be in the front office, middle office, or the back office systems that any bank or an enterprise deal with. So even on the integration strategy that we have jotted down, we are make sure that we are actually uh, put the client in the middle. So a client experience actually drives what the integration needs and the. Uh, that we need to provide uh, for a particular applications or a particular solutions. Just to give an example. Uh, if we have like uh, broadly, we have two type of mechanisms how to connect systems, right? You have a uh, synchronous way of mechanic uh, like connecting, and you have an asynchronous way of ways of connecting. So in the in the synchronous ways, like in the, in the various aspects of like when you use SOA, you can use an uh, API or so on and so forth. There is certain there is certain like requirements. If the client is waiting for you on the other side, you need to be synchronous, right? Because I mean uh, that's the nature of the business. For example. But then for examples where you are posting a payment and that has to go to your back office, it doesn't have to be synchronous. And, it, and then you can actually go to an event and you can publish an event and the other guy sitting in the back office can at his time pick up the events and then uh, David or credit the accounts. And that will, that will reduce the back pressure that the systems has. Uh, and that's how you actually make your architecture resilient. Yeah? Uh, and of course, the, the fifth one is the voice for growth. So, how do we actually uh, how do we actually make sure that we can acclimatize with the growth, uh, with the business growth, with the technology growth, with the with the, with the, with the growth in the markets that we deal with? I mean, obviously, for that, I mean, in in today's context, banking is open up. So, we we know the context of open banking. We know the context of banking as a service. Uh, so, that's that's one aspect we are dealing with. How you connect to more partners because there is a lot of fintechs who are actually pseudo banks. Uh, the reason I say pseudo banks is that they might not do all the banking, uh, all, 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 all the banking uh, functionalities, but definitely they're in the space of like uh, savings account, current account, payments, like credit, so on and so forth, loans, for example. So we have to make sure that we, we open our banking stuff and then provide uh, as banking as a service to these people. So that comes up into the picture of open banking. Then you also have the today's context of the regulators, where you have the third party providers and you have the uh, PSG type of framework where we need to open up the bank. And needless to say that, I mean, all these things, all these complexities that we deal with cannot be dealt with unless and until we have 
like the proper observability, proper telemetry. Uh, so that's where the unified model of monitoring uh, comes into picture. So that's that's broadly the principles. How we what are the principles we have set forth in front of us to get to our north star? Uh, so this is not work or uh, Bible in itself, but the thing is that this is the thing. Whenever you are building a system or whenever you are doing anything, these are the principles you need to have in mind. And you can choose a system B against a system A, uh, which is fine. But the thing is, as long as it satisfies the core principles, so that's that's where we are. Uh, uh, now, uh, as I told you, like uh, we are moving to the cloud, and uh, any bank is actually moving to the cloud now. Now, as our strategy. As standard charter strategy, we have a cloud first strategy. So we are actually putting our staffs into uh, AWS, Azure, uh, and CSPs that we deal with. Uh, so, uh, so in terms of like, how do we go to the cloud, and how, why do we think moving to the cloud brings more complexity? And that's where the perspective of like, for example, APIs or events are more important uh, than even before. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we have done. Even on the cloud migrations, even when you go to the cloud, about putting our cloud strategy, we have put down a few principles. Uh, the principle number one is actually the cloud agnostic tooling. So what it means is that uh, today we might go to AWS, we might go to Azure. We do not see the future. I mean, the, the future can be like in the next five years, there can be two more CSPs coming out. But irrespective of wherever we go to, I mean, it, and then they, for example, on the countries, you can have different like CSPs. Uh, our architecture should be uh, should be cloud agnostic. So what it means is that, like, uh, uh, for example, the way people, uh, the way we deploy in AWS should be very seamless to the way we deploy in Azure, or it should be very seamless to the way we deploy in another CSV. So that entails that uh, we need to actually have an abstraction of the Terraforms and all that. Uh, so I'm not going to do technical details, but you all understand that. But but essentially that it is cloud agnostic. And in in terms of in terms of like just another example is that. Every cloud will have their notification service, will have their messaging service. But in terms of the fact that we already have an on-prem, which is actually 70, 80% or 90% of our computing deployments, and then we have the clouds, I mean, we need to open up the architectures and keep it like cloud neutral, even for all the integrations of messaging, as well as APIs, as well as events, as well as file transfers. Uh, so that's what it is. Uh, the second one is actually a very important aspect because it's, it's called topology agnostic, the way we call it. And I think without this, you cannot seamlessly go to the cloud at all, or you cannot actually like, uh, or you or you cannot go to the cloud with a with a cost that you have in mind. And if you do not build it topology agnostic, I mean, there's a massive amount of cost that you need to enter for all your journeys. And this is where the concept of service mesh and event mesh comes into picture. So that's the underlying of this, right? So what it means is that, let's say, for example, a internet banking system is actually consuming uh, some some services, some events, or some APIs from a payment system, and the payment system is on-prem, which is on on on-prem data center. Now, if the payment system moves to the cloud, the internet banking application is completely agnostic of it. So, so the, the systems, the the channels or other system that is consuming a service or an event or anything for that matter. From another system should be decoupled from the cloud journey or from the transformation journey of the back office system itself. So this is this is very paramount. Otherwise, like um, the entire thing will go wrong in terms of cost, people, and, and effort. Uh, the third aspect that we have looked at is the uniform tool set, which is all about like I talked about observability, telemetries. So this is all about how you build an abstraction over the CSPs that they provide so that. When you when you actually provision your uh, software applications, anything that you talk about it, uh, then uh, either in on-prem or the CSP, it has to be seamless because a developer should not know. Like for example, I mean, of course, you have the Terraform, and we have different tools. We have like AKS, EKS, OCPs. I mean, your whatever is whatever you can talk about. But in, from developer's perspective, to actually get efficiency, you need to make sure there is an abstraction so that it deploys once and then it deploys, it gets deployed everywhere, right? So that's what we call it from tool set. And we have a single uh, control plane or single plane of uh, glass, whatever we say. That's about like how you actually monitor, how you actually do your production support uh, type of activities. So your your control plane, uh, you need to have a single, uh, you have to have single snapshot as or single calendar scope, either from on prem or from CSVs, any CSVs whatsoever. Uh, so in terms of the journey, now the thing is that like all the stuff that I'm talking about, I mean this is very. Uh, this is a very architectural, uh, uh, architectural like uh, uh, way that people want to proceed. But the thing is that what I am not telling you is the complexity 
that comes with it and the and the way you have to come out of the complexity is via your open architecture is via deploying your um even even architecture is actually deploying your api strategy so that's what goes underneath right uh, but i'm giving you a, like the, the top part of the cake um, so in terms of like just continuing from my earlier slide on cloud so as you see that we have a multi-tier strategy uh, from on-prem like on-prem is your 100 percent companies on for example these are uh, on-prem data centers then you go to hybrid where it's on-prem plus cloud and then you can actually migrate all your computing uh, and build cloud native applications for one particular csps and then you go to the multi-cloud so if you really think about it i mean i can i can surely see like all the i mean, i know for sure all the banks and bigger enterprises are actually moving to cloud and everybody's in a hybrid state nobody has gone completely and nobody has like uh, hasn't missed the bus everybody started and then in the some some case or the other and that actually brought huge amount of complexities uh, for all the banks and large corporates. And um, that's where you, that's where the architectural uh, purity or the architectural um, agility will most matter. So in the next part of our discussions, I will hand over to my colleague Srinath, uh, who will take you in details like how did the messaging oriented middleware uh, evolved in standard chartered and how it is helping us to Get to a state that all I spoke about in terms of the North Star, in terms of our cloud journeys, in terms of our EDA journey, uh, in terms of our API uh, first journey. So, yeah, handing over to Shiva. Uh, 